Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Coming to you from Washington's premier indoor shooting facility. Of course, that's Security Gun Club right here in Woodenville, Washington. Hey, we're at the start of the year. State legislators are about to get back into session nationwide, which means there is all sorts of new efforts out there in various states to disarm you, the lawful and responsible gun owning American. Case in point, a bill that we're gonna talk about out of the state of Pennsylvania. Is this bill gonna save lives? Of course not. Is this bill gonna make your community safer? Of course not. Is this bill gonna address some of the crime issues that your communities are suffering from? Absolutely not. But could this bill disarm some individuals in Pennsylvania? It most definitely could. So let's spend a few minutes a day and talk about fly with a gun and lose your Second Amendment rights. Okay, hey, before we get going down the road, we're going down. I'm proud to announce that this video is being brought to you by, who's this video being brought to you by? Let's ask Travis, the armor here at Security Gun Club. Travis? Today, this video is brought to you by Gun Butter. This is absolutely our preferred gun lubricant at the shop here. Tell us more. Well, they have over 20 plus years of experience now. They were using the help of aerospace engineer design team. It is non-toxic, non-corrosive, low odor, water dust, carbon resistant, rust and storage protection for over 20 years. It works in negative 70 degrees all the way up to 700 degrees Fahrenheit. And I love this easy to use needle nose applicator. It gets exactly where you want it and stays there. You guys using anything else in any of the firearms here at Security Gun Club? I actually use this on everything. Door hinges to guns, you name it. All right, hey, if they want to get their hands on some of this, how do they get a hold of gun butter? Gun Butter, you can visit their website at gunbutter.com. There's also lots of shops starting to stock this on their shelves. We stock it here all the time. That's Gun Butter. Okay, so what we're talking about is a proposed piece of legislation kicking around in the Pennsylvania State Legislature that would revoke the concealed carry licenses of any person who attempts to take a firearm through a TSA security checkpoint. Now, I know you sit there and you go, well, who the hell would try to take a firearm through a TSA security checkpoint? Unfortunately, the answer is quite a few. And as a matter of fact, as a practicing attorney, I can tell you that I uh, feel numerous calls a year in which individuals have accidentally tried to take a firearm through a TSA security checkpoint. What do I mean accidentally? It means that they stored their firearm in some kind of other handbag or grab bag or something like that, then threw all their personal belongings on top, headed to the airport, oftentimes in a rush, not realizing that the firearm was still in the handbag. Now, just so you know, under most state law, that is actually not a legal activity because it requires you to knowingly and intentionally take the firearm through a TSA security checkpoint. However, the TSA is gonna see things way different. You are gonna be fine because the mere act of carrying a firearm through the security checkpoint creates a civil liability. Whether you knew it or didn't know it, it's irrelevant. In all the times that I've talked to the hundreds and hundreds of people who have accidentally done this, I have yet to speak to an individual who's actually intentionally done so. But that's not gonna stop Democratic Representative Dan Frankel from Squirrel Hill. Is that, is that really? Squirrel Hill, hmm, okay. Um, but yeah, you see, Representative Frankel is gonna be proposing a bill in the Pennsylvania State Legislature that will say that any individual who is caught trying to take a firearm through a TSA security checkpoint will have their concealed carry license revoked. Now, of course, the representative who's chumming the waters for his base, like we see so often this time of the year, well, he's talking a little bit tough. In fact, he was quoted as saying, for years, I've watched law enforcement try to solve the problem of guns in airports with education, signage, and public announcements alone. And the number of incidents has continued upwards. It's time to look at solutions with teeth. We could serve to prevent these dangerous events from happening and also identify firearm owners who may not be qualified to carry a deadly weapon in public. Well, Representative, that certainly is some tough talk. And if we were having all of these massive drive-by shootings inside our airports, if we were having gang violence inside of our airports, if we were having shootings related to drug trade inside of our airports, if anybody can point to me any data where some person was shot by another person with a firearm on the 
correct side of the security checkpoint, hey, I'm all ears. But you see, this is a solution that is still looking for a problem. Now, here's the other thing I want you to be aware of, Representative, is that you assume, of course, that everyone who's carrying a firearm through a TSA security checkpoint is also a concealed carry license holder. I don't know where that assumption comes from, but I can assure you that oftentimes individuals who are not lawful nor responsible gun owners oftentimes don't comply with your licensing regimes as well. So even if you had 100 people go through your biggest airport there in Pennsylvania in a given year, there's a high probability that half of them or close to half of them don't even carry a concealed carry license. So what are you going to do when you revoke the, something that they don't have already? You're going to tell them that, oh, well, you can't get one in the future. Yeah, guess what? They don't care as evidence by their behavior. Now, of course, Representative Frankel says that this, of course, creates the risk of just an unintentional or accidental discharge in a crowded airport. Of course, that also assumes that guns just, you know, go off by themselves. The bigger problem here is, is that, listen, the Transportation Safety Administration, the Homeland Security Act and all that was created for a reason. We absolutely positively have laws that prohibit a person being armed with a firearm while they're engaged in domestic air travel. And for that reason, security and law enforcement officials have tried everything. The feds increased fines. Pennsylvania sheriffs have stepped up signage and educational efforts, and the media dutifully writes story after story as incidents of TSA confiscation occur. But it keeps happening. Responsible gun owners do not forget that they are carrying a loaded weapon. Responsible gun owners do not need an intervention from TSA to stop them from attempting to board airplanes while armed. Well, Representative, I understand that's some really, really tough talk and I appreciate what you're doing here, but the minute that you can start saying that data shows that we are having a tremendous amount of gun violence occurring on the secure side of America's airports, well then congratulations, your solution will have finally found its problem. Listen, we'll go ahead and link up everything down below. Now I want all of you to be aware of it because what you're gonna start seeing is efforts where a person makes an honest mistake. And I do agree with the representative that a lawful and responsible gun owner absolutely knows where their firearms are at all times. And I have counseled many individuals as to how could you have possibly left a firearm in the bottom of a handbag and not known it was there. I recognize that everyone lives a slightly different lifestyle than I may, and that's perfectly okay, but listen, lawful and responsible gun ownership, there are some certain universal principles that come with it. The thing I want you to be more aware of, though, is, is that this is gonna start a whole new trend of any time a person does something of a negligent nature, with no ill intent, no nefarious intent whatsoever, but has something such as an accidental discharge, or has something such as this, that government is now gonna treat these people as if they're going around committing mass shootings and strip them of their otherwise inalienable rights. That's the reason I wanted to talk to you all about this because I think this is a very troubling trend that we may see in other states. Like I said, we'll go ahead and link the bill up down below so you guys can geek out on it for yourself. If you got any other questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information is right down there in the description box. Now, in the meantime, let's say everybody remember that Part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe.